Welcome to Cyberculture Interface. Today we are looking at IEC2 Certified in Cybersecurity Review. Basically, what we are going through today in a few minutes is to look at the, con the content of IEC2 Certified in Cybersecurity exam. And we are treating basically domain one, which is the security principles. So if this is the first time for uh, that you are joining us on Cyberculture Interface, please like, share, and subscribe so that you can follow through the other domains when we review them. Back to the video, we are reviewing domain one, which is security principles. So what are the contents? What are you going to find in the exam? Or what are you going to find when you are studying for your certified in cybersecurity examination under the domain one? So the first thing that is being uh, talked about is the concept of information assurance. And the concept of information assurance basically is in three, uh, is, is in a three uh, prong, or is described by what the concept we call the CIA triad which are the primary components of information assurance. So the C in the CIA triad is confidentiality, which talks about protecting data that needs protection and preventing access to unauthorized individuals. The I is integrity, ensuring that data has not been altered in an authorized manner. If there is going to be any alteration, it has to be authorized. And the A, speaking to the availability, making sure data is accessible to authorized users whenever they need it and in the form and format that is required. So if someone is authorized to access certain information and the request for such information, the information should be available. Hackers always try to prevent uh, access to information. Situations where you have uh, incidences like DDoS, you know, denial of services or even ransomware, basically they are uh, stopping you from having access to your information. The importance of privacy, authentication, non-reputation, and authorization is another concept that you find under the domain one of security principles, uh, under the concept of information assurance. So you need to understand what privacy is all about, that is keeping your information away from the public, authentication, that is validating your identity, basically, and non-reputation, ensuring that when data is you know, altered or changed, the information or the person that the, the, the Details or the stamp of whoever makes that changes is captured and then you, you cannot deny it. And authorization is actually ensuring that you have the authority to carry out whatever uh, task you want to carry out. This is a picture of the confidentiality, integrity, and availability, which is a triangle uh, that is called the CIA triad. So another topic that is treated under the domain one, which is security principles, is risk management. Risk management basically it's talking about the process of identifying and evaluating or uh, controlling threats, including all the phases of risk context, you know, risk assessment, risk treatment, and monitoring. So and when you talk about risk, risk is basically vulnerability found in an asset that can be exploited you know, by threats. When you apply risk management you know, to, to assess, and you are assessing and prioritizing the risk for an organization. So in risk management, basically you are assessing and then prioritizing this risk. So they, they, you have a concept of high probability, uh, low impact, high probability, high impact, low probability, low impact, low probability, high impact. This is a matrix that you can use to categorize, you know, uh, risk within an organization. And there's a popular form, uh, formula, you know, for calculation, which is talking about the level of risk being equal to probability uh, plus impact. This is a formula that you make use of in, you know, prioritizing risk. Risk management has uh, about three approach, four basic approach. You can accept risk, which is you can ignore the risk and continue your risk activities. This is when you feel that the risk is not worth to uh, interfere with your, uh, with your operations. In a situation, for example, maybe you want to share an information. You know, if you share the information, there's a risk of people picking on the information and using it against you. But when you consider that the risk of that is not uh, is not worth enough for you to stop sharing information, you can go ahead and accept the risk and share. Also, in risk management, you can avoid risk, which means you can completely stop the risky activities and then uh, remove the likelihood of occurrence. And in this case, uh, you can decide not to share that information. Like in the example I made, you can decide not to share the information and avoid the risk completely. Mitigating risk can, is an action to prevent or reduce the impact of an event. So. One of the things when you are mitigating a risk, may, for, in the case that I mentioned, when you are sharing an information that is you perceive to be has some risk, 
you can mitigate the risk by sharing it and giving an explanation or sharing it on a platform whereby people can ask questions. Thereby, you are mitigating the impact of you know, what could happen if people misconceive uh, your information that you have shared. Another way is to transfer, which is passing risk to the third party. This is very common when you make use of insurance. You know, a third party, which is the insurance company, bears the risk by, you know, when you transfer the risk to them. So another topic under the domain one, which is, uh, is the security principle, is security controls. So and when you are talking about security controls, you are looking at safeguards and countermeasures that protects the CIA, which is that protects your confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the system and information within an organization. So we have three types of control. We have the physical, technical, and administrative. So under the ISE 2 certified in cybersecurity, you look at physical controls, technical controls, and administrative controls. And then the implementation of security controls reduce risk to an acceptable level. So when you implement security control, you are expected that this will help you to reduce the amount of risk exposure that your information or your system is exposed to. So when we're talking about physical controls, physical control is using physical devices or hardware devices, such as maybe a badge reader or if building a fence and putting you know, barbed wires around the facilities, or you know, or taking specific security actions, maybe using our security guards to block people or using some uh, barriers, you know, these are physical controls. Then we have technical controls or logical controls. This is when you make use of computer systems and networks to implement. So when you're talking about things like firewalls, you're talking about things like, uh, you know, uh, setting up a DMZ zone, you know, configuring uh, intrusion detection systems. These are technical controls that require some levels of technicalities. And then administrative or managerial controls. This uses directives, guidelines, and uh, advisories or policies to you know that are aimed at the people within an organization. An example of administrative control is you know when you pass an information that certain uh, places within an organization cannot be used for chatting or for use for uh, for doing official system or maybe a certain a principle like okay you cannot work on uh, on your system at certain hours of the day. These are administrative controls. So we have three controls, physical controls, technical or logical controls, and then we have the administrative control. Then we have another key topic that is treated in the domain one, which is the governance element. So, and inside governance elements, we are talking about things like governance, I mean, policies, procedures, standards, you know, organizational security rules and governance, policies and procedures, they determine organization management and they drive how decision, decisions are being made. So we have regulations, we have standards, we have policies. So regulations give back to standards. You know, uh, when you have a regulation, regulations are usually put in place by the government, and you know, and then people create standards out of government regulations. So when there are standards by uh, organizations like ISO. You know, like when you have current Institute of uh, Electrical Engineers, you know, all those kind of organizations, they can set standards. And then standards are used to make policies within the organizations. So when policies are set, when an organizational derives its own policy from the standard that's been set, then procedures within the organization can now be set up for you to carry out certain action. For example, if you are going to carry out the vulnerability assessment, the procedures for carrying out your vulnerability assessment within an organization would depend on your company policies, and that policies must have been derived from standard, maybe standard like NIST framework, and then those standards are usually influenced by the regulations that government has put in place. So when you have regulations, these are laws and has penalties. Uh, standards, they are put together by teams, and they provide a framework and policies, you know, policies and procedures to support regulations and policies are within the organization and then the guide organization also procedures these are step-by-step -step details for completing a task in line with organizational policy so and the last thing that uh, you see under the security principles which is the domain one of ISE 2 certified in cyber security is the ethics so basically it's a, it's a review of ISE 2 code of ethics and what this uh, topic or what this section is basically talking about, members must commit to act legally and ethically within the field of cybersecurity. That is, as long as you're a certified 
uh, you know, member or ISE to have certified you as a cybersecurity professional, you must commit to act legally and ethically within your uh, practice. This is cyber culture interface. If you have gone through this video and it makes any sense or it has helped you in any way, please like the video and share with your friends. And also please subscribe so that we can grow this channel and put up more amazing content. Please watch out for review of domain two of certified in cybersecurity.